then me, God says it is out of your willingness that God requires of you what one has, not what he does not have. So God does not demand of you what he has not already given to you. So when he says, give me, it means he has already given to you. And he requires out of the portion that he has given to you, you give back to him. Come on, say amen. I want us to go back to the beginning, the book of Genesis at the Garden of Eden to see the perfect because chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Genesis talks about the perfect plan of God for mankind. That before sin came in chapter 3, there was perfection in the mind of God and in the relationship between man and God, there was perfection. Man was at the perfect state of relating with God. He was relating with God at the cool of the day. The Bible declares that God would walk at the garden and commune with Adam. So what was the perfect state uh, of man? If you read the book of Genesis chapter 2, we are starting from verse 7. He says, And God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being or a living soul. He says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, we are reading together, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Verse 8. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Uh -huh. Verse 9. Verse 9. It says, And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for the food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So you see, man was planted. He was planted placed in the garden of Eden a perfect place where there was plenty and abundance and God says let, let us bless man in this garden to keep it and to till it and to nourish and to take care of it but there was uh, something that was also put in, the, in, in there it was the knowledge of good and evil and the, also the tree of life was placed in the, in the garden of Eden the same verse in uh, the same chapter, chapter 2, verse uh, 15. Give us verse 15. Verse 15 uh, to 17 of Genesis 2. Uh, we are reading with you. He says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. 17. But you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely. Now you see, well, it says, of every tree of this, of this garden, you may freely eat, but of this tree. That means God has placed everything that is good in the garden, but there's one little problem about it, isn't it? There's one little problem. Amidst the goodness that you have in the land, there's one little problem. That you may eat all of this, but there is one problem uh, here. If you eat this one, and I don't know if you have been like me, I've always uh, been asking this question. Why would God put such a tree in the garden when everything is so nice? Have you ever asked you a question, uh, uh, that question? Why would God... Uh, put such a tree in the in the garden of Eden if I wish he just left us with the good trees uh, uh, that we freely eat isn't it and then remove this bad one the knowledge of good and evil remember it was not the tree of good and evil it was the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil the knowledge of good and evil. That's where your problem starts. So he places that in the middle of the garden and says, eat everything else, but do not eat this one. Wow. And then I notice the reason why God placed such a tree is because God did not want to force man to obey him. 
he wanted man to choose. Right? Because the best quality choice is that choice. A choice can never be a choice unless you have alternatives. True? Some of you with the employment, you don't have a choice. So you don't choose to go to work. No, you have to go to work. Because what is the alternative? Eh? <laughs> so I don't feel like going to work today. But you have to go. Why? Because you have no choice. But God designed his worship and service to be out of choice. That man would choose. God wanted that man would choose him. That's why every time God calls us, he gives us alternatives. He does not want to push himself on you. He does not want to force or coerce you to serve him. No. He wants you to want to. It is one thing to need something, but it's more important to want it. Most of us sometimes need our spouses, but your spouses will love you if you want him, isn't it? That you are with him because you want him, not that you are with him because you have no other place to go. You want your children to want you, isn't it? Not just to need you. Hey, come on someone. Do you want your children just to need you? <laughs> says, I'm here for school fees. Mom, I really need you. No. You want him sometimes also to grow up but want you. That he can come out of his own volition. He doesn't have to stay or come to visit you, but he comes anyway. Because he wants you. Isn't it? And God wants us to want him. Not just to need him. That's why he gives us option. Joshua 24, 14. He says, choose you today whom you shall serve. If it is God or Baal. He gives us options. Do you want to serve Baal or you want to serve God? 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. He says, how many times shall you wander between two opinions? If Lord be God, serve him. If Baal be God, then serve him. Elijah was telling the Israelites, no, serve God out of your own volition. Hmm? Serve God out of your own volition. Do not wonder between whether I want Baal or I want God. No, choose God. He says, I lay before you, Moses said, I lay before you life and death. Choose ye life. Because every time God calls you, he wants you to want him, not just to need him. He wants you to serve out of your own volition. You choose to serve him. Revelation 3.20. He says, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah? He says, if anyone will hear my voice and open the house, I'll come in and dine with him. God is not a door breaker. He asks for permission to come in. That's why the Holy Spirit is gentle. The Holy Spirit does not just override your life. He seeks permission to interfere with your life. Says Ephesians 4 that he says, Grieve ye not the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed on the day of your redemption. He can be grieved, meaning that he does not just bombard your life or coerce you to follow him. No, he comes by invitation. He wants you to, he wants to be wanted, not just to be needed. And when you have friends around you, you don't want friends that just need you. You want friends that want you, isn't it? You know they are needy friends. Eh? They are needy friends that are, uh, are also a danger not only to themselves but also to you. Have you ever had someone say, if you leave me, I'm going to commit suicide? Hmm? That means he's a needy friend clinging on you until they suck the sap out of your life. Uh, you want a friend who wants you, isn't it? <laughs> who is just may not need anything from you but wants you. And love thrives where there is want, not just need. Hey, anybody who has ever fallen in love here? <laughs> Come on, church people. Have you ever fallen in love? You want someone, isn't it? Ah, uh, don't put uh, that face on me, eh? <laughs> Can see some of you. Oh, please. Eh? We are on holy grounds. But you want. Some people want to be wanted, not just to be needed. Uh, if you are in employment, you want to be wanted, not just to be needed, not just because of what you can achieve. No, you want to be there because people like your company also. They like you being there, not because of what you can deliver. Huh? 
So there is a human need inside of us of want or being wanted, not just being needed. Have you ever seen people say, I was just used and dumped? Because if you just needed in a place, you feel used. But if you are wanted, no matter what you do, it means that your presence is welcome. And God wants to be wanted. That you should not serve God. You know, most of us reach a place and say, now we may back in Mungu too. It means you need him. But haven't you ever asked yourself, do you just want him? Even when you feel you don't need him. Yeah? Even if you feel you don't need anything from him, do you just want him? Because we are operating in a system of push where everything must be dragged around you. People must be driven. You must have a supervisor to drive you. You must have a leader in the church to push you around to do something. But God is pushing us to a place where we we'll want what to do. We are willing. In our engagement, we are willing. In our education system today is a push system. The push philosophy is used that everything is push down your throat. Hmm? People are gathered in the same place. You don't care the diversity of the needs of people, the gifting and the talents, the aspirations and the passion of the students. One curriculum is pushed. One message is pushed down the throat of everybody else. Uh, you don't ask yourself, what do the students want? Where, where are their passions, their aspirations? Where are their giftings? I wish you'd be able to study the aspiration and the gifting of a child and then direct him to that passion, isn't it? It's a pull philosophy that helps the students to grow. Not the push. Pushing people, you must do this, you must do this. And if you operate around that, you'll just operate in a church of a push system where you must be, uh, the, the rules and regulations must be read to you to, to follow. In the new covenant, there is nothing like that. You must be willing to follow. You follow out of volition, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Because the church is not an organization. It's not a professional body. The church is an organism where you come voluntarily. Eh? Our characteristic is that you are, you are here voluntarily because you want to. Hmm? You don't come because, hey, I have to. No. You come because. And your children will also love when they see a mother serving them because she is willing. She wants to, isn't it? Eh? Hey, watch it, find it too. You are sissy wives, so we must do this. No. <laughs> are you willing? Hmm? Hata chakula umepika out of obligation kina kustaki, sindio? <laughs> and the children look at your eyes and they say, hey, <laughs> mama ni lazima tu wafanya hii. It does not come out of. And some of us just do things because of public relations or to maintain peace. You understand? You can't say no because, you know, how will it look like? Eh? <laughs> The most difficult place to lead is a church. Because in an organization, uh, uh, an employee can say, I am tired of this supervisor, and can tell it on your face, isn't it? And your, your supervisor can say, I don't want this kind of a shoddy job. In a church, you don't do that. No matter what kind of report they bring, you, it is well. It is well. So that they don't leave. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Uh, in a church you must remind them hey, please come to the meeting and then when they come you say thank you for coming has a supervisor ever sent you a message saying Monday remember it's work yeah? <laughs> then you arrive and say oh brother Gashuru thank you I am honored to have you but God is calling us to willingly follow praise God willingly follow. Let, give us Hebrews. Hebrews 13, 18. Hebrews 13, 18. Hebrews 13, 18. You are reading with me. It says, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things. Eh? Conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. Give us K, KJV. KJV. Do you have that? Now let's read this. He says, but I have verse 18. 
verse 18 verse 18 Hebrews 13:18 Eh? That guy is asleep. All right, it's he's hanged. <laughs> Turn to yours. See, you came with yours. Why are we struggling? Turn to yours. Why are we struggling? I know maybe you contributed to buy the screen and now you are demanding. <laughs> I, I, I can't buy two things for the same function. I bought the screens. Yeah? You know, church is funny, eh? <laughs> Yes, in the little on the screen. Hmm? What does you say? It says, "Eh, uh huh." Mm-hmm. Yes, that I desire to live right, or I am willing to live honestly. Some version, isn't it? Willing to live honestly. What are you willing? Are you living to live honestly? No, there are some people in shoddy businesses that are not willing to live honestly. Huh? You must be, because God will follow through your willingness to empower you. If you want to live righteously, if you are willing, God's power comes in. If you want to live honestly, God's power comes in to support you, to help you in that direction. If you want to live holy life, God, if you are willing, say, God, I'm willing to live. God's power comes in to help you. But some of us are not. Someone say, do not think that everybody wants to grow. There are people who don't want to grow. Eh? Don't, don't think that everybody wants to grow in business. Ah, there are people who are comfortable with small business. It gives them control. You see, the larger you grow, the more you lose control. Do you know that? You can't have control and growth at the same time. Control comes with smallness. But multiplication comes with loss of control. But there are people who don't want to lose that control. They want still to be big. Yeah? The business card to read the CEO of one person. Hmm? So that he has control. So, but if you are willing, God will empower you into that direction. Hallelujah. God empowers you. Philemon, Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. Do you know where Philemon is? Just before Hebrews. By the way, let me surprise you. It's in your Bible. There's a book called Philemon. <laughs> Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. Uh, Paul is writing to his friend Philemon about Onesimus. Chapter 1 verse 14. What does it say? Eh? Hey, did you get it? Hey, God help us. Eh? The professional church. Hmm? Let me read for you, man. Just before Hebrews and after Titus, we have this. It says, not giving. No. He says, but without your consent, I wanted to do nothing that your good deed might not be compulsion as it were, but voluntarily. Eh? Shall not be by coercion. But your, your good act may not be by, may not be compulsory as in by obligation, but may be willing. That your acts of kindness are not compulsory. You are not pushed to do something, but you are willing, willing to. Oh, willingness. Come on, declare, God give me willingness. Willingness. That once you have willingness, your good works or deeds may be out of willingness. You're willing to do it. You are not pushed. Isaiah 1, 19 says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Meaning, the good of the land is reserved to the willing. It's reserved for the willing. Those who are willing and obedient. 
that your obedience is not out of circumstance or being pushed or out of pressure. Your willingness is voluntary. It has come from your heart. So those that are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. So there are things that prayer cannot deliver, but willingness will. You cannot substitute willingness with prayer. You must be willing. There are things that are just uh, unlocked in heaven by willingness. Once you're willing. You see, Daniel was told, even before he started praying, he says, on the day that you set your heart to pray, an answer was delivered. But it took 21 days. On the day that you said, you know, he was willing to pray. He was willing to, he had not even started praying. But the Bible says, on the day that you set your heart to pray, meaning on the day that you say, I'm willing, Lord, to pray, an answer was dispatched. So there are things that prayer will not deliver. It says, whatever you pray, desire when you pray. Because prayer without desire or willingness ah, is making noise. You must be willing, willing to pray. There are a few things I want to share, uh, areas that willingness will, will help you. Uh, one of those areas is service, service, willing to serve, willing to serve. Another one is willing to lead. Another one is willing to sacrifice or to give yourself. Another one is willing to give or offering. Offering. Willing to give. Willing to give. Let's let's look at First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles twenty eight. First Chronicles twenty eight. The Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. All right. Chronicles is after Kings, huh? Samuel Kings Chronicles. <laughs> Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Did you get Chronicles? I'm waiting for you to open. Hmm? Reading is for all of us, not for the paid up. Did you get First Chronicles chapter 28? Yeah. Today, today the machine has hanged. Eh? So that you remember where you kept yours. Let's read together. It says, as for you, my son. 28 verse 9. 28 verse 9, it says, as... look here, the Lord has had mercy on you. Look. Verse 9 says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know that the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a service. Requirement of service. To serve God. You must have a willing mind. No one should ever push you to serve. Must have willingness. Don't just serve because somebody has called you and say, uh, help us here or help us here. No. Have a willingness to serve. Because when you have willingness to serve, you not look for motivation from anyone. Eh? You not look for a reminder from anyone. And you will not be stumbled by anyone. You will serve no matter what. Because they are not the ones who called you. Isn't it? You are willing. You came from your house willing and say, I am going to serve. So when somebody commends something that is hurtful, it doesn't get into your spirit because you're willing to serve. Oh, praise God. You're willing to serve. You're sold out to service. Chosen an area and said, Lord, 
please help me to serve in this area. And when you are willing to serve in a certain area, God is going to empower you with the necessary gifting and, 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 and ability to, to be effective in that area. Are you willing to serve? Come on, ask yourself in your heart, are you willing to serve or you are serving just because you are given a title or a place or a position? Are you willing to serve? Serving out of Give us verse 21. First Chronicles uh, 28. Give us verse 21. What does it say? We are reading with you and says, And behold the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God, and they shall be with thee for all the manner of workmanship, every willing. It says every willing, skillful. It is not enough to have skill or gift of talent. That skill must be accompanied by a willing heart. Willing, skillful. There are so many skilled people but are not willing. Eh? So you must be willing, skillful. That you are willing to use your skill to the service of God. Come on, let's proceed. Give us the next chapter 29. 29. Chapter 29, verse 5. Chapter 29, verse 5. We are reading with you, it says, The goal for the things of gold and for the kinds of work. The question is, who then is? Eh, who is willing to consecrate himself to the service of God? The question is, who is willing? For those that are, those are the ones enlisted for service. Those who are willing. Serving God should not be drudgery. Should not be something that you drag your feet. Uh, should be willing. How many people here are willing to consecrate themselves for the service of God? That's the question God is asking. Not serving because so and so is serving. Not serving because it's prestigious in that area to serve. Not serving because your boyfriend or girlfriend is there. No. Serving because you're willing to consecrate your service to God. Praise God. Are you willing to serve? That's one area called service. Service must be accompanied by a willing heart. He says, a perfect heart and a willing mind that is given to service. Give us Judges chapter 5 verse 2. Judges chapter 5 verse 2. It says, you are reading with me, Judges chapter 5 verse 2. Wow. When leaders lead in Israel, the second one is giving yourself. It says lead, giving yourself for service. Now giving yourself, you as a person, uh, because God wants you before he has anything you ever have. God wants you first. And people think, let me just donate. Let me just give a gift and it will suffice. No, God wants you first. It says, as people are willingly offer themselves, have you offered yourself? God wants people who offer themselves willingly to him. Willingly to him. Proverbs 23, 26 says, son, give me your heart. Son, give me your heart. Son, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. Son, give me your heart. It says, son, give me your heart. Proverbs 23, 26 says, Son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. God, more than anything else, is looking for your heart. That your heart should not be lost in the cares of this world or the, 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 all those the passions that you have, but your heart should be lost in him. Before you give him anything, any ministry or any gift that you have, he says, Son, give me what? Your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart. Give yourself before you give your ministry, your service, whatever it is. And people ask, hey, what do they want from me? The men ask. I've given them everything. I've built them a nice house. I pay for them school fees. Uh, these people are never satisfied. No. Apart from your money and your house, they want you. It is you they want. 
create some time for them. Isn't it? Before they receive your rent and your school fees that you pay, they want you first. So give yourself. It's easy to give everything else except yourself. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 11, 2. Nehemiah 11. Nehemiah 11, verse 2. We are reading with you. It says, And the people blessed all the men who willingly offer themselves. Those are the people that are blessed. People who willingly offer themselves. People who willingly offer themselves are the candidates for blessings. They willingly offer. And Paul was speaking to the Corinthian church where we read first, uh, Second Corinthians 8. He says, I want you to know of the grace of God that was bestowed upon the churches in Macedonia, uh, Second Corinthians 8 verse 1, of how in their deep affliction and great poverty they gave out of liberality. They gave themselves. They gave beyond what they would even think. He, said, he says in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Meaning they were generous Even though they had many issues uh, Many afflictions And they were in deep poverty They gave Verse 3 Give us verse 3 It says For I bear witness that according to their ability Yes and beyond their ability They were freely willing They were freely willing Verse 5 Give us verse 5 And not only as we had, And they were giving us Not as we had hoped but they first did what? And then to us by the will of God. They gave first themselves. Do you know you can visit people, they give everything they have except themselves. Eh? Do you feel nice about it? When you go to a place, you have this nice guest house, guest room given, everything is there, but they are not there. How do you feel? But you can go to a house which does not have much, but he gives himself to you. Isn't it? So, and if you have someone, you, are, you want somebody who gives himself to you willingly. You feel wanted, isn't it? So you, they gave themselves willingly beyond what they had of. For they entreated upon us, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 4, they imploring upon us that we might receive the gifts upon us and taking care of the, of the saints. They imploring upon us, meaning asking us, begging us that we may receive what they have because they wanted to minister to us but first they gave themselves ah. give yourself tell your neighbor, give yourself mm. give yourself willingly give yourself willingly I know you are contributing the money I know you are contributing something else but first, give yourself no matter how big your check is to a church, you see, before you give your heart to God, it doesn't help. Hey, come on, people. Yeah. You cannot sub substitute your giving with yourself. You must give yourself to God first. Your giving cannot substitute that. Give yourself. That is in the area of sacrificially giving. Giving yourself as a living sacrifice. He says, Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you by the masters of God to present your bodies as a living, holy, and acceptable to God. For this is your reasonable act of service. Give yourself as a living sacrifice. Not just the things that you have, no, but also yourself. Have you given your heart to God? You see, if we all gave our hearts to God, there are things we will not be doing here. For example, telling you to lift up your hand, you just lift. Telling you to worship. Now, worship the Lord. No, you just worship. Otherwise, what did you come to do? Because this is not a circus. Eh? This is not a game. You didn't go like to Uhuru Park to watch zebras. No, you came to worship, isn't it? And all of us came to worship. And even the worship team is worshiping. The pastors are worshiping. Everybody to the audience of one. So nobody is in a position to drive you to serve God. No, you drive yourself. The spirit of God inside of you drives you to worship. Isn't it? Come willing. And when you're willing, somebody who is willing can be taught. Isn't it? Say, Lord, I'm going to your house to worship you. Teach me how to worship. 
teach me how to grow. Hmm? But most of us operate like a professional club. We've come on Sunday, so the secretary has not spoken, the vice chair, the secretary general. Eh? So you're looking around, maybe you're doing assessment, and then you leave and say, hey, our church is dry. No, you are. You are very dry. Hmm. But if you came here and everybody lifted their hands, and before you are told, you kneel down on the ground. You say, Lord, I need you more than ever before. But most importantly, I want you, Lord. Let me know your power. Restore your power, O oh God. Let me see your power like the days of old. What I read in scripture, let me experience it. But most of us are comfortable with the religious rituals of coming every Sunday. Please grow out of it. Grow out of the ritualistic attendance of church and have a real experience with God. Say, today I'm going to church. I want to see you, Lord. I want to experience your power. You have said this speaking in tongues. Why it is? I want to experience it. If you are willing, God is going to honor that willingness. But you can be in a church five years <laughs> and you can have the membership number. Hmm? But you're not growing at all. The fact that you've been here for 20 years does not mean you've grown 20 years. You might have grown one year repeated 20 times. Hmm? You are just a new believer. Willing. <laughs> Tell your neighbor willing. Willingly give yourself. <laughs> Don't wait for, your, for you to be pushed to give yourself. You know there is a time like that. When you surrender, you say, Lord, I am here. Because of what you've gone through in your life. When you are still with your health and your sound mind, everything is doing fine. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I willingly give myself. Don't wait for those things that come. Because a time will come. <laughs> because if there is no willingness of giving your, yourself, you can also be helped to give yourself. You understand? And when God helps you to give yourself, <laughs> it's not, not pretty. Hmm? Then willingly offer. Whatever you offer out of willingness is blessed of the Lord. Whatever you are pushed to give, coerced to give, manipulated to give, does not bless you. You must be willing. Come from the house, say, I want to give this. You've heard the need. I want to give this. Don't be pushed. You know, some of us give out of guilt. Hey, what are some Oh, my friend is kama wuli anaweza toa hiyo. Ah, hata mimi naweza jikakamua. You are not competing with anyone. Give willingly. And don't be manipulated to give. Ah, what you've determined in your heart. Give us Exodus 25 too. Exodus Exodus 25 too. Speak to the children of Israel. We are reading with you. Uh, Moses was told, for everyone who has a willing heart when he brings, receive. And then, like they had a sensing meter, huh? they put on your heart and say, uh, you are not willing. Where you deny? <laughs> Where you are willing, worker. Yeah? For as many as are willing, receive an offering. Are you understanding? If God was to measure your heart as you put that, <laughs> are you willing? So, hey. <laughs> ah, Lord. Um. That's why Gashuru receives, receives from you because you don't want to be seen as if you didn't get, get, give anything. So you just pushed something. Who are you fooling? Just relax. If you don't have, you don't have, right? Yeah? And smile as the nini passes. Because he says as many as of the willing heart, God demands of you what you have and not what you do not have. Or don't do a dabra kadabra like you are. 
uh, you are you are distributing bahashas so that nobody will see whether you gave or you didn't <laughs> relax as many as are willing give us 35 chapter 35 verse 5 Exodus. Read with me. It says, take from an, an offering whoever is you see, gold and silver from a willing heart. If you don't have a willing heart, stay with it. Verse 9. Give us verse 9. This, this, this it says, so all that from all that from verse 6 it talks about what you should give, right? Whether silver, gold, wood, onyx, precious stones, whatever. Now let's go to verse 21. 21. Then everyone came. Next verse. Of gold to the Lord, as many as are what? You know, some people uh, remain tight lipped until you mention something, and some of the preachers know how to get money. Eh? I was in a bus, someone would say, Praise the Lord, it was tra this traveling bus. Hey, 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 now I want to support Kazia Buana, Nini, Nini. Eh? But people are just quiet. And that guy continued now with the preacher, with the preaching. He realized people are not giving. He says that kwa ibasi, atuwezi jua kama tutafika, praise God, atuwezi jua kama nini. He says, <laughs> so he says, oh, kama unataka kusimama na kazi ya buwana ten, everybody was like, eh. We need kufika salama, my friend. And some of us, we are just doing it differently, but maybe because now my child is a candidate. Hey, God. Askasrike, unamwekea kitu. So, form one, I kumbuki, form two, I kumbuki, form three. Lakini ni exam. God. Uh, envelope. Tunaita Thanksgiving. Please. <laughs> as many as of our willing get it to God. Give us verse 29. Verse 29. What does it say? 29. You're reading with me, it says. If you read these verses clearly and with understanding, you realize it means in this camp there are people who never brought offering. It says free will offering as many as were of a willing. It is never a demand in scripture for everyone to give. It's for those who are. Because when you are not of a willing heart, you are going to blame God, you are going to be angry, you are going to be, you say, Lord, now I gave everything. Now I don't have rent. Eh? Because you expected him to come through before the end of the week. You don't give so that you receive blessing. You, you give because you are already blessed. Hey, come on people. You are already blessed. You give out of, that's why he says, give a portion of your increase. The Bible talks about your increase. God has blessed you in that land out of it. As many as of the... It's not bribing God. <laughs> oh, now we are, we are going to this place. Huh? Now, you know, we are just traditional African whatever. You know, everything we do to please the gods, that something bad will not happen. You know, if you are going on a safari, you give something, isn't it? You pour something on the ground. So you have just clothed it in religious clothes. But you have still the same mind. Huh? 
kitu mbaya isitendeke naenda kwa hiyo interview praise god uh, na unitangulie <laughs> Then if you give me success you see the conditions even our prayers by the way lord if i see your hand and if you make me successful honor and glory will return to you i don't know that means if i don't see your glory eh there is no honor that is coming to you eh this condition of prayers we are now traveling if we arrive safely but you may arrive in a way that you don't think is safe isn't it what will happen God receives glory no matter what. Eh, wapendo. Let's read of the last verse then I close. Ezra chapter 1 verse 6. Ezra chapter 1. Ezra chapter 1. You know where Ezra is? Ezra and Nehemiah Esther, you know? Hmm. Now read this. He says and Unaona hiyo they were they willingly we only collect things that are willingly mm-hmm. give us three the same chap, uh, book ch- chapter 3 verse 5 3 verse 5 huh eh? what does it say and those that are willingly offered a free will free will offering mm-hmm. and, and it's important to know the instruction coming from this prophet because Ezra was not very powerful guy a guy who if you look at the life of Ezra it summarized in the book of Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 he says he was a guy who gave himself to scripture to study it to practice it and to teach it all over Israel the law of the lord give us that verse Ezra 7:10 for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to teach look at his life so when he tells you something you better listen say freely give the free will offering the same chapter verse 16 give us verse 16 what does it say that you may find all the province of babylon along with the free will offering of the people and the priest are to be freely offered wow say lord come on make a prayer from your heart say lord teach me to be willing say lord teach me to be willing that when you serve in your family at your work wherever it is you are not pushed or driven you are willing 